this uh, editor works very much kind of like play at this point, where I can kind of stretch out my vertebra, use the mouse wheel to kind of inflate the play parts. We have uh, quite a number of creature parts that basically have functional meaning in the game that determine things like how fast your creature is, uh, what its life cycle is, what it eats. Um, as I start putting parts on my creature, it kind of slowly starts coming to life. Uh, I only have certain parts of luck right now. Now, we also want the players to be very imaginative, so we try to put, you know, very few limitations on kind of what they do. So if I decide, you know, I want to have a picture of two bowels down here, you know, one eye in the middle, um, you know, seven legs, five tentacles, whatever, we don't disallow any of that. In fact, we're kind of counting on the players to do just really weird experimental things. Um, in doing this, we kind of had to teach the computer a lot of the things that we used to have to do as game designers. You know, we used to be... Uh, our artists would sit there and spend a lot of time building a model like this. You know, but instead we thought the computer would build the match very quickly. Uh, when it came time to paint, you know, a texture artist would sit there, and I'm like, this has been three or four days of painting with things. Um, and there, you know, one click, it actually picks the picture. It's a texture book. Everything that I encounter, all the pictures and everything, are basically going to be coming out of editors like this. When a player makes something in an editor like that, uh, it not only ends up populating the world, but also ends up being redistributed to all the other players. Um, if we pull it back to the space view here, okay, so we just gone to a couple of stars here. Now, one thing you want to be doing with this whole game also is trying to contact intelligent life. Um, as we move the mouse around, we're actually having a radio telescope return from that star, and so we're actually coming in the setting game here. Um, and we'll actually, so this one will actually be getting in radio chatter. So it means that there's some intelligent race and that star. So as we fly over there, we can actually encounter an alien species which was created by another player. Um, this is the world. They want to talk to us. We can kind of and there's a whole thing about, you know, basically meeting these alien races. We you know, ended up being trading partners, allies. They have colonies, home worlds. Uh, also, as players are kind of moving around this galaxy, we want them to encounter all the things that they might see humble on You know, we have things like black holes, protoplanetary disks, you know. Again, I wanted to convey to players, in a kind of a caricature, you know, the layout of the galaxy, the type of things they might find, the relative scales. Most people have no idea what the difference between, like, a planetary nebula and an emissive nebula is. They're tremendously different in size and totally different in kind of what they are, but most people just have no concept of that. They see these pretty humble pictures, but there's no reference point for how to compare them and where they're, you know, how common are they in the galaxy. Uh, we actually have here, really simulated an entire galaxy. Um, and as I pull back here, you get a sense of the scope. Um, we have, really have, you know, millions and millions of totally unique worlds here. Every world you go to will be unique. Every picture you see will be unique. Every plant, every everything. Uh, eventually, you know, we see the player on this kind of epic quest toward the center of this galaxy. It'll take quite a while to get there. Um, and we've got a lot of things kind of hidden along the way. Let me give you a sense of... Yeah, if you go to just the right spot in the galaxy, and this is hard to find, it's kind of way out on the spiral arm, and you zoom into this one star, But basically, so uh, I don't know how I expect the player to find this, but if they go to just the right spot, somebody's eventually going to find uh, Earth or our system back here. You go in, and you know, we have the real terrain maps for these planets, and so if you want to go in here and now practice terraforming Mars, what we might want to do, uh, we have that as well. So really, I want players to kind of understand, you know, the scope of the galaxy, you know, kind of what life's position it is, how all these things relate in a very fun, playful way that, for the most part, you know, undirected, except for the goal structure of the game. But at the same time, they can be extremely creative with it uh, in how they approach it and what they do. Um, so that's pretty much, I'll stop the demo there so we can do some uh, Q&A stuff. And I'll stand up for that. And we can turn the mic down on this Questions? First up, questions.
Oh, I just had to ask, uh, if you go to Mars and terraform it, then uh, do other players encounter your uh, newly terraformed Mars? Um, we're pollinating things that the players make, like Mars and stuff like that. It's basically what we're calling a, a massively single-player game, because every player is actually playing in a copy of their own galaxy, and we're using other players' content to fill that. Now, if you build, like, your aliens, and you build a home world or some nice planets, and I encounter those planets, I can go blow them up, but they're not destroying your originals. What it did is it pulled out a copy of what you did, uh, brought it to my planet, or to my galaxy, and now I'm now playing with a copy. It'll report back to you. We also have this thing called uh, the browser. So for every piece of content that you encounter in the game, we have we win cards. And these cards actually show like every creature you've seen, every planet you've gone to, etc., along with who made it. So you can basically click on one of these things, um, look at this thing this person's made, you can actually contact that person and leave, you know, kind of notes, like, well, I love the starship you made. And every one of these cards becomes kind of a running bulletin board, You're basically a community discussion thread between the players. You can also subscribe to themes, so people can tag these assets as well. I could tag, you know, Star Trek on the ones that like Star Trek things, or Wizard of Oz, or whatever I want, or Care Bears. And, you know, somebody else can then go search for Care Bears and find all the things, the assets that are, like, you know, Care Bear-like, make a forecast, I can subscribe to it. So you can actually pick a theme you play the game, but I want to play the whole game with the Christmas theme, you know, Santa Claus, UFOs, flying around, stuff like that. Next question. So have you looked at uh, allowing other people to uh, get these creations out into other worlds? I mean, some of the meshes that you're showing there and the editing you're doing are incredible. Yeah, it's actually, you know, we found even with our artists now, they're starting to use these editors to make little models for other purposes. Um, one of the first things that we did for, like, test reasons initially, which turned out to be really useful, is that uh, from our editors, we have a very simple uh, Maya export that'll put, you know, any one of these models out in Maya. So, uh, if I might ask, uh, what did you put in the bin for uh, Spore 2? <laughs> Sorry um, to ask that. Yeah, I learned a lot of stuff. That, you know, obviously when you're dealing with a game about the universe, you can put a lot into it. Uh, and, well, as I was mentioning about, you know, we want to release the Creature Edgar first, and then Spore the PC game. We're actually looking at a lot of other ways that we can take these tools, you know, the leverage from these tools off into totally different directions. We have one of those uh, 3D printers in our office, um, which are colored now, by the way. They print out 3D color models. And now we can export anything from the game and just print it out. So we have all these little printouts of creatures and vehicles and whatnot. Um, that's a really cool direction. Uh, you know, obviously we can do things like trading cards. Um, there's just a lot of different directions that this can go to where it's not just a PC game, but it's kind of more, you know, in game terms of franchise. Uh, but I would like to imagine something that's kind of like Pokemon, but an educational franchise where, you know, kids are kind of uh, more connected to real issues, science, stuff like that. Uh, I'd say there are kind of directions we can expand this kind of in the PC space, like Sport 2.0 on the PC. I can think of a lot of things that I would want to add to it. Um, but Sport as a franchise in terms of what are the other ways in which this can become kind of an identity or brand that, you know, is a kind of a fun take on the universe and evolution and biology. Uh, I think that probably interests me more than, you know, what Spore 2.0 or the PC game is going to become. I'm more interested in how to get it out of the box into the world. Sure, I'm over here. <laughs> is there a, a sort of online aspect where the players uh, will have an a online presence to display their creations? Uh, and is there a sense of, like, a competitive accomplishment where if you're more successful uh, creating the civilizations and planets, that will be uh, a competitive element in this? We have on our website, yes, we will actually be showing things like popularity of the content. Um, and you'll also get reports back, and people can also write directly back, you know, to the guest book system. Every card, every piece of content you make uh, gets a card in the game, you know, which is what this browser is showing. And anybody can open that card and then comment back to you. The, uh, in general, in terms of the competitive, you know, kind of ranking or how these things kind of stack up against each other, I'm kind of more interested actually in that as a competitive uh, endeavor, I mean, as a uh, creative endeavor. I'd rather people be cre uh, competing on creativity and narrative and storytelling. There's some other things in here uh, when you're like doing a picture editor or any part of the game, I can actually open the recorder and start making a little movie. So over here on the little side.